the land of sunshine would very much like to see founded a Southern California museum. Such an institution would naturally, of course, be located in Los Angeles, the chief city of these 45,000 square miles. And the bulk of the preliminary labor is already done. We have here private collections which, in their one specialty, surpass that department of any great museum, and enough of them to give us such a museum as now exists in no city of this size in the world. Lummis's awareness and, and uh, passion about the past leads him in a straight line to the prime mover role in creating the first museum in Southern California, in Los Angeles. He got behind this movement to establish what began as just a, a society for preservation, but moved into creating an actual physical museum. In 1907, the Southwest Society was born as a way to uh, collect the physical artifacts of what everybody recognized was a rapidly changing society here in Los Angeles. He didn't come from means himself, but he was really good at, at lobbying forces and joining people together and creating um, support and, and developing funds for his causes, one being the building of the Southwest Museum. We can hardly hope to rival the all-embracing museums of a great metropolis but we can very easily have the largest and best museum of a locality that was ever opened, distinctively Southern California, covering accurately and fully the infinite range of scientific and aesthetic interests peculiar to the seven counties. In terms of the collecting agenda, he was not focused exclusively on uh, any particular culture. He wanted to really uh, combine the cultures. So it was very uh, forward-looking, you could say, uh, while it was uh, also very much aimed at preserving things that he saw as going away. He believed that the people who were here before and people who had a long history here and were living with us concurrently had built something of great value, and we'd better pay attention to it. It would be a collection so endlessly valuable and ceaselessly fascinating that it would be famous the world over. The early 20th century, we have the building of the Los Angeles Aqueduct the opening of the Southwest Museum and Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County as important institutions that signal Los Angeles coming of age. Lummis felt that preserving Native American cultures and Mexican cultures was very much important for Los Angeles as it was moving into the industrial age. So I think it was important to continue his work in preservation by building a structure to house his collections. The collections attached to the Southwest Museum are extraordinary. And so the cultural power of those collections and the opportunities to teach people about indigenous cultures and indigenous craft and artwork, about that complicated history of very, very diverse peoples on the Southwestern landscape, that's an important place in Southern California's cultural DNA for a century now. Every museum has this conflict of being a place where things are presumed to no longer be alive. This is where you put the old stuff. In indigenous communities, things that have spiritual value uh, remain alive and need to be respected and need to be kept within the community. So there's been and continues to be a lot of conflict about how indigenous culture is presented within the museum context. I think that if you were gonna make a critique, it's that he didn't fully recognize uh, the agency within native communities to determine their own future. We already know that he was a man who could never break away from his own cultural baggage, his own chauvinism, his own Eastern intellectual view of the world. But for his time, Lummis was as good as it would get in terms of a preservationist. And he did amass a lot of raw data that is now available for um, much more careful uh, observation and, and reflection. For almost 40 years, I've been a collector. The Southwest Museum will not take everything. Its duty to its community measures up with its duty to science. 
but what it accepts, it will care for and trust, so long as the fabrics will hold together or the pages stand. What they can provide as an index of history and of human life will be preserved. Lummis was a preserver with every fiber of his being. He wanted to protect and to present the beautiful things that had been made uh, here and uh, throughout the Southwest. That was what his life was about. So the Southwest Museum was just an extension of his life. You are in the Brown Research Library, which houses the Southwest Museum Institutional Archives, as well as Charles Fletcher Lummis manuscripts, photographs, sound recordings, and other things created by Charles Lummis. We have a little over 1,300 linear feet of manuscript materials all together. Lummis takes up about 160 linear feet, 269 boxes, and it includes his letters that he wrote to people, as well as the letters he received, of course, his journals, his scrapbooks that he created, camera equipment, notebooks, a lot of different pieces because he was involved with so many different things. I just want to go to that page. Usually it starts with where he is, what time he got up, and um, the weather. So the weather was perfect on June 14th, 1904. Perfect, perfect, hot. And this is the day that he should have done the recording. These are the wax cylinder recordings made by Charles Fletcher Lummis. Before 1904, around that time, he had asked for money to do these field recordings from the American Institute of Archaeology. And his argument was that we need to record these Spanish folk songs now, which was about 1902, 1903, or else um, those that would be able to sing these songs would no longer be around in 10 years' time. So he called it Capturing Archaeology Alive. And with the genius of Thomas Edison's technology of wax cylinder recording, and player that he can now actually record these songs and save them until perpetuity. Uh, so there's about 600 wax cylinder songs. Most of them are Spanish language songs. He recorded songs at his home in El Alisal, and we've been re-recording the songs in the new playback medium since the 80s, and now they're in digital form. They are probably the earliest recordings of, of Mexican songs that were recorded here in this region. Lummis was a man that was productive and he was proud. And for him to have this record of what he did, it helped him take stock of what he accomplished. And therefore that's where he found the value or what he um, contributed to whatever may be while he was around. <laughs>